Hello, uh, my name is Derek, and today I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about Gradix in action. So, I'll give you a quick demo of uh, where Gradix is, what it does, and the main concepts of promises, uh, and all of those things. So, to start us off, I uh, just want to show you the uh, environment that I have set up. So, I have a platform cluster, and in that platform cluster, I have Gradix installed. I also have uh, a couple of Kubernetes clusters that are my worker clusters. So, that's where Gradix will actually schedule workloads. And I also have a destination, and not a different type of destination, different type of a place that Gradix and our workloads, which is actually backed by Terraform. So we're going to see those things in action as we go. So the main concept of Gradix is this thing called a promise. And a promise is a definition of something as a service. So you can see here uh, on the left what a promise is. Uh, it's basically made of uh, four big components, an API, an API containing what are the fields that are configurable for your user to provide that particular thing as a service. On the next part of a promise is the dependencies. The dependencies is, uh, are all the things that need to be pre-installed or pre-configured or needs to exist in your destinations, in your worker clusters, to make sure that uh, you can provide that thing as a service. Uh, and then you have a series of workflows. Workflows are a list of containers, a series of containers that can run that will run one after the other and you know fulfill that promised service. So it will actually create that thing as a service or, or create a declaration of what that means. Uh, and you also have a few destination rules with those credits where to schedule those workloads. Um, so what I have in here uh, in my system, and you can take a look uh, in here, if I, a user came over to my uh, platform today, they are able to run okay, get promises and they will quickly see the promises they have available. So you can see that they have a deployment promise and have an S3 promise. So I pre-installed those promises. Uh, you can see here on the top that my two worker clusters already have an Nginx controller running. So this is a dependency of my deployment uh, promise. So when I installed that promise, it distributed uh, those dependencies across all of the clusters that could take that workload. Um, but Cradix works really well with interfaces as well. So you can take a look. Uh, the same view that is, we had in there, you can you can actually have it uh, in backstage. So you can see this beautif beautifully designed backstage um, where my user can come and say, well, what are the promises that I have available? Oh, this is the same two promises, right? But uh, more than that, if they want to request a service, they could come over here uh, in the, uh, the terminal uh, and send a request that looks something like this. So you can see that it has... Uh, an API version, kind, some metadata, and some spec, some information. Or if they're using Backstage, what they can do is actually come over here uh, and fill the form. So let's uh, do that now. When I install that promise, Cradix actually let me uh, send this request. So here's the things that I need to configure, the, the image, the uh, what is the, the destination that I want. Uh, we get more than that in a second. Uh, how many replicas do I want? So let's say two and what the board of my service is working on uh, is 80 in this case. So let's go ahead and create. So what Cradix will do on the back of this request is we receive that request uh, and immediately run the pipeline. So you can see the pipeline running here. And this pipeline contains a series of images, a series of Docker containers that can create that deployment uh, on demand. So you can imagine, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, that you get a uh, deployment running you may need a deployment definition, YAML. You may need a service definition. You may need some ingress rules. You may need some service accounts. You may need like a bunch of resources that is too much for your developers to create. With Cradix, you can actually concentrate all of that, um, all of that logic into the promise, into that bundle, uh, and simplify the API. So I, as a user, didn't have to actually know anything about Kubernetes at all. All I need to do was to fill the fields that you provided me um, in your promise. And as you can see, my website got deployed. So that's great. Uh, more than that, if you take a look at uh, my Slack channel, uh, I also got a request. So in saying, hey, there's a new deployment. You can see the time for uh, 5.47 just now uh, from Team A, from our website that is available here. It has two replicas, and this is the uh, the image that it's using. So what Cradix, this is just to show that within your pipelines, you can do anything you want. Uh, you can call external APIs. Yeah, you can do any, um, any sort of compliance scanning, any security scanning, any validation. Uh, you can integrate with any system uh, that, that you want. So uh, the way that Cradix 
process that request, just to like exemplify maybe with a diagram, we send that request through backstage in our case, but it could be via terminal or any other interface that hits the deployment promise, which runs the series of workflows. That workflow will output a certain number of documents. It may send requests uh, to external APIs like we did and save it to the state store uh, for a particular destination. So in one of those destinations, there is a GitOps agent here running, it could be Flux, uh, Argo, but that is reconciling on the state that is being declared. So that's how our app just started up on uh, on the worker cluster. So that is great. So as your system grows, and you can see as well, by the way, that the website is now here on uh, available on Backstage. So this is all great, but as your system grows, uh, as your uh, platform grows in popularity, you may have more and more uh, promises getting installed. So today, for example, we only have two, but for the user to actually get a deployment running with a bucket for storage, let's say, they would mainly need to come over here, and create their deployment. They would mainly need to go over here and create the S3 promise. But not only that, so if you take a look at uh, what an S3 promise uh, looks like, it has many fields, right? Like, what does this mean? So the user starts, maybe get confused here as well. Like, what what is the encryption? Which one should I use? Should I use this one or this other one? Uh, is is this something that I need? Or I don't need to check. Is my bucket public? Or maybe probably not. Uh, region, uh, I don't know. What is the region that my app is running, right? Do I need to care about that? Um, do I need to care about versioning? And you can see that this API may be very, very complex. Uh, again, this is fully in your control as the platform writer, as a people like as a person writing the promises that we're deploying this platform. Um, you can choose how much you want to give to your user. But if you have many teams contributing to that platform and many teams writing promises, it may get hard for them to know, well, what do everyone need, right? Like we probably have teams that are really specific and are looking for that uh, very like low level configurability and you need to uh, allow them to do so. Uh, but for 80, maybe 80% 80 of your teams, all they want is really a bucket that works with their app, right? Uh, what Credix allows you to do, and I, that's what I'm going to do now, is uh, to combine those lower level resources, those lower level promises into higher level experiences. So what I have in here is a promise, which I'm going to install right now. That's called the app as a service promise. And what that promise does is combines the deployment prom promise and the S3 promise into a higher level promise. Uh, again, this could go as wide as you want. Here, you're only using two promises, but you may have caching, right? And then you bring Redis or, or some other caching uh, infrastructure with it. Maybe you have messaging queues and you can bring Kafka or, or something like that. So you can build full developer experiences that resemble uh, the Heroku experience, the Cloud Foundry experience at the same time that it's customized uh, and specific to your business rules and what is allowed in your organization. So as I install that promise, I can refresh my... Uh, my backstage, and I can see that, hey, a new promise appeared. Let me filter here by promises, which is great, which means that uh, also an associated app template just appeared. So I can come over here and do create. So let's go ahead and uh, send a request here. Uh, and you can see that now the interface is different. It provides me a different API, it's just asking me, give me your app image. Is this a dev or a prod app? So let's say, let's say prod. Um, yeah, I need a bucket, why not? Uh, I need a bucket for my app because that's where I'm going to store my, my data. Um, port 80 is great. So let's review. It's like, OK, uh, actually, this is 8080. Uh, OK, OK, now it makes sense. That's what I want. Let's go about and create it. And similar to le last time, what Cradex would do is trigger the pipeline for the app as a service promise. So you can see that the workflow started down here. But what will happen next uh, is what is different. Gradex is actually going to send requests for the deployment and the S3 promise. And you can see that those uh, trigger their own pipelines to create their own services. Um, so if we take a look at a, maybe in a, in some, in a graphical um, representation of what a, of, of this promise is, it's basically the APIs. But the dependencies for that promise is a combination of other promises. And when I send that request in, what happened was, the workflow got triggered. The workflow by, the, by itself triggered to uh, send two new requests to the platform, one for the bucket, one for the deployment, which triggered their own workflows uh, that got scheduled to destinations. Um, as I mentioned, the S3 promise is actually backed by Terraform. So if I go back here and go to my Terraform repository, what you actually see 
is that we are scheduling it to this uh, to this particular uh, to this particular uh, repository. And what this is doing is actually running Terraform. So let me take a look here in one of the Terraform plans, and I have my action. So this is great when you have uh, teams that are already providing their uh, services. They're already using Terraform. They already have their own infrastructure. You want to bring them to the platform. All they need to do is build that pipeline, is build that promise that will push, uh, that will actually schedule to to your Git repo. So it works well with Terraform Enterprise, for example. Uh, you could also run Terraform directly on your pipeline. It's no bother, uh, but it's just one one of the ways you can do it, and one of the ways you can reuse the sort of tooling that we already have uh, or that you are more familiar with uh, in 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 your in your organization. So with that, if I go back to Backstage now and refresh, I should see uh, that now I have a new system, the to-do app, uh, which is actually made of an S3 bucket in my deployment. And if I go back to my uh, terminal, I sh you should see that I also have um, I to-do app running on prod because we selected prod. Uh, and I should have my bucket on, uh, on AWS as well. Uh, which is great. So it's awesome. So at this point, what you have is the ability to provide buckets, deployments, anything you want as a service. You have the ability to combine those into a more higher level experiences, and then you can control the level of abstraction that you want to actually expose to your users. Another aspect or another uh, feature of Cradix is the ability to bring in what we call aspects into your, uh, into your promises. So take a look at this diagram. As part of the workflows, we have things that are unique to each promise. And those are the provisioning stages, right? The deployment promise outputs a deployment, a service, an ingress.yaml. Great. Those are unique to that promise. Uh, unlikely that the bucket promise will need to, to create those sort of resources. But there are things that may be shared across uh, different promises. Let's say billing is the same for uh, every single promise. Uh, audit, security scanning, notifications, compliance, all of those things can be owned by different teams and shared across the promises. Uh, of course, any one of those particular uh, aspects can call in external APIs. They are still containers. Um, they are still part of uh, of the Promise API, so to speak. Um, and this is where they look like. So you can see, for example, in our uh, bucket Promise, we are running a compliance scanner over here. Uh, we are running a notification on Slack. We run some audit logs. We are running some billing. And you can see that all of those things are simple images that are added as part of the uh, as part of the process of requesting that bucket as a service. Uh, and actually, if I come over here and I try to get my deployments, you can see that I'm actually already running. Um, we, are, we are running a compliance scanner. And you can see that for two of the, of the deployments, no, com no compliance issues were found. For other two, we actually had an issue. So this is the same image that is running across all of the, all of the promises. Uh, if I do on buckets, uh, OS3, sorry. You can see that no compliance issues were, were found, uh, but you can see that they were found on, on the on the other two deployments. And what I want to do now, what I want to do next is actually have that ability to manage the upgrades, right? How do you go about and fix all of those things? Just a note, uh, in this example, we chose to not fail the pipeline on a warning um, for, for this particular compliance scanner. But again, it's your image, it's your promise, it's your organization. You may say, well, if your deployments has less than two replicas, then it should fail, right? Um, or or not. You should just warn, send a notification, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but in here, when I illustrate the, a case where like we, we don't want the pipeline to fail, we want the provision to go ahead, but we just want to warn the user. Um, great. So let's say that the user did not change this uh, at all, but it got to a point where the platform team got notified. Someone said, hey, we need to fix those uh, sort of compliant issues compliance issues, and we need to bump them up. Uh, and that's relatively straightforward. Uh, so basically, the first problem that you have is like, cool, what are all of my non-compliant instances, right? Where they are, how they look like, uh, and you know, I want to identify them, which we just did. Uh, and the second thing is I want to bring those instances into compliance. So what Cradix allows you to do is by apply a new promise definition, that new promise definition will actually rerun the pipeline for each one of the workflows, for each one of the resources that got created. Uh, and that new pipeline needs to declare a new state saying, oh, move, change from this state to that state, right? Like bump the number of replicas from 
one Jew at least Jew. If you have more than one replica, don't change it anything. Like this is the example we have. And this is how uh, in that scenario, uh, a few of the deployments will be touched and will be upgraded by uh, by that change. So if we, we can see that in action by coming over here to the pipeline and applying a new definition of my promise. So let's take a look. I now applying an HA deployment. And what this is going to do is once again, trigger the pipeline for each one of the deployments that I have uh, in my uh, in my system. You can see that there are about four pipelines triggering, triggering because that's kind of the number of deployments that I have. But more interesting, once the deployments are going, and I can uh, show you this here, uh, it's actually going to go and run the compliance scanning again against this new declaration. And now you can see that it immediately went from non-compliant to compliant. So no issues found. Uh, and then, of course, if we investigate the new state that we have for the backend deployment that had three replicas, nothing has changed. The website that we only had, uh, that we had two, nothing has changed. But the mobile app and the Trudeau app, they both got bumped. So seamlessly, all of my instances across all of my worker clusters, you can imagine I could have tens of thousands uh, of deployments and dozens of clusters. Uh, running across, they seamlessly got upgraded uh, to this new definition that contains um, at least two replicas. But you can uh, exercise your imagination and think about how do I upgrade database versions, right? How do I do a migration of services from a place to another? Cradex allows you to have all of those controls uh, to determine how do you want that upgrade to happen and to do that automatically across the fleet. Uh, cool. So that's uh, pretty much all I had prepared for today. So thank you very much for your attention and talk to you soon.